So everybody, welcome back to the office. So uh, the big thing today was um, when we talked in the very beginning, we saw that Bitcoin Cash was, was jockeying for position. Sometimes it was number five, sometimes it was number seven. And the big question is, you know, why is that actually happening? And I think one of the resolutions was because there is a potential fork going on. Now, I don't know all the different uh, instances of what is happening. So I had to reach out and ask some questions. And thankfully, uh, this guy came on the show and I think he was the right one to answer. So Roger, welcome to the show. What is going on with this fork? Tell me what's happening. Yeah, so there's uh, two different ideologies at this point. So there's the ABC camp that was the original name of the group that forked away from the BTC version of Bitcoin into Bitcoin Cash. I guess they've been frustrated that they're not getting as much money from businesses or people or wherever uh, to pay for them to do the things that they want on Bitcoin Cash. So they decided that on November 15th, they want 8% of the block reward to go directly to them and their, their group. And the vast majority of the rest of the Bitcoin Cash community says, no, 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 that's not how Bitcoin has ever worked. And that's not how Bitcoin Cash has ever worked. Uh, we're not going to do that. And so half of the original group that made Bitcoin Cash's initial full node implementation split away from Bitcoin ABC and formed another group called Bitcoin Cash Node. And currently on the network, more than 50% of the network is signaling uh, for Bitcoin Cash Node for the November 15th upgrade. 0% of the network are signaling for Bitcoin ABC, which is the one that will have the 8% fee from the block reward go directly to those developers. And the other 40-something percent just plain isn't signaling at all. Uh, so what will happen on November 15th? My guess is that um, Bitcoin Cash will continue to be Bitcoin Cash without any portion of the block reward going to pay for uh, a set of developers that decided that they're going to pay themselves out of the block reward. Maybe those developers that really want that will decide to split away, but that'll be some other coin called ABC coin or something else. And the vast, vast majority of the Bitcoin Cash community will continue working on Bitcoin Cash. So, uh, But if anything, I think this shows uh, an example that... Uh, that's the beauty of cryptocurrencies. Everybody can have the version of a cryptocurrency that they want, whether it's Bitcoin Cash, ABC Coin, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, Monero, take your pick. There's a, there's a cryptocurrency out there for you. Yeah, you know what? So, okay. So I think in my mind, I had it switched around. I thought it was with your group, it was 8%, but it's only it's the opposite way. Gotcha. The thing is like, like when, when I see this and like what everybody sees, they're like, ah, another fork. And it's like, every time we hear about a fork, we're like, God dang it, another fork's coming out. So it sounds to me like this, it might actually happen, but it might actually die on the chain. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. But I share your frustration like, oh, yeah. another fork. Oh, more arguing. <laughs> oh, I share your frustration there. It would be easier if it didn't exist. But uh, the best positive outcome out here is maybe every Bitcoin cash holder gets a free airdrop of more uh, you know, free ABC coins here on November 15th. So. Yeah, and, 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 see, and, and that's, that's one of those things like I – like when I look at this, I think to myself, okay, because I remember when it, it was all about airdrops and splits and forks, and it was like, okay, time to make some money, right? All of a sudden, we're going we're gonna to split, and it's going to come in. It's going to be fantastic. However, it doesn't always work like that. I remember way back in the day when Monero split, and they had a separate, uh, you know, separate chain. I was like, okay, this sounds pretty good. Monero's a pretty good project. Died on the chain. Did not happen. So I see like this. I see what's going on, and I'm wondering to myself, is this the same type of situation? And it almost sounds like it could potentially be that. But who knows, like you say. Yeah, and, and just, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. With the original Bitcoin Cash and BSV split, I thought that that was going to, the, the one fork would die on the chain and would just continue as one. And boy, was I wrong on that assumption. Um, gotcha. So and then, you, you never know until it actually happens, I guess. Is there any way, any kind of resolution between these, these two groups to go, come on, let's just meet in the middle? Or is it kind of like, okay, do it, and then we'll see what happens? Yeah, I, I think the, the resolution and what would be the happiest for everybody are the people that want 8% of the block reward. Uh, they should go ahead and do that, but they shouldn't say that it's Bitcoin Cash. They should uh, hard fork away and have replay protection and choose what their name for their coin is, and then they can get 8% of the block reward. And some people will like that, and some people will build on that ecosystem, but uh, Bitcoin.com is going to continue focusing on Bitcoin Cash because there's so much amazing stuff happening on that, even without 8% of the block reward being uh, diverted to some developers. Okay, Roger. So you, you did the tripwire. So I, I, I said, if we got time, I'll ask you the question. So what are you guys, because you said it's going to be fantastic. So what are you guys doing to move Bitcoin Cash into mass adoption going, not just this year, but next year, three years, five years? Yeah, there's so many things. One that's immediately useful for everybody right now is uh, Tether. USDT is available on Bitcoin Cash. You can use it right now in the Bitcoin.com wallet, and it's a 20th of a penny per transaction. 
Whereas on Ethereum, you're looking at three, four, five, six bucks per transaction at the moment for your Tether transactions. Uh, so you can use Tether right now in the Bitcoin.com wallet. But where it gets really cool is using these things called Cash Fusion, where your Bitcoin cash can be really, really, really private. You can check it out at CashFusion.com. And we're building that right into your Bitcoin.com wallet. And if you combine that with uh, reusable payment codes, you're basically looking at having a, the same sort of ballpark of privacy as a Monero but in Bitcoin Cash that's accepted at more than 100,000 websites across the world. So I think that's a really powerful tool. And I'm a big fan of Monero. I bought my first Monero at around a dollar each, and I've been a Monero fan for a long time. But uh, because Monero is so awesomely private, I prefer to get adoption on exchanges around the world and businesses around the world, whereas Bitcoin Cash doesn't have that problem because the privacy is coming a layer above the biggest protocol. And then, of course, tokens, tokens, tokens on Bitcoin Cash. It's just amazing how easy it is for people to make tokens and pay dividends on chain to the token holders. So you can issue a, a token and pay Tether as dividends to all your token holders for your new you know, ICO project or business or whatever it is. So really exciting there, too. Or new whatever project you got going on. Whatever kind of DeFi sushi nonsense you got happening, right? Whatever. Watch out for bad sushi. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Hey, I appreciate it. What was the name of that again for the uh, privacy factor? For Bitcoin Cash? Uh, cash CashFusion.com, uh, available for desktop today, coming on mobile in the Bitcoin.com wallet, uh, should be this year. Okay, I had no idea about that. That's pretty cool. So for all you privacy fans out there, that could be your next step because of what is happening with privacy coins. Roger, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And that's it for today. Let's jump back. And just real quick, a uh, quick correction. It is not CashFusion.com. Like Roger said, it's actually CashFusion.org. So I was taking a look at it and then uh, I got a message like, hey, sorry, I messed up. So a uh, little correction there. So CashFusion.org, here's all the information that you can have. You can take a look at it. It's all about privacy. I'm not a big privacy guy for you know privacy coins, but uh, for some of you out there, this is a big deal. So I just want to make sure everybody knew what the heck was going on. All right. All right so I hope that answered some questions. Let's see how it all plays out. Hopefully it works out for the best. I have no idea, but uh, we'll see. Uh, so that's it for today. Uh, thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. Really appreciate it. If you don't know, there's a join now button underneath. Um, you don't get anything special. It's like a buck ninety-nine, like a tip. And these are all what I do is just give uh, shout outs, random shout outs. So I just want to say thanks to everybody like Steve Subi. Also for Modern Samurai, uh, I Am Not I, GK, DJ Hausa, uh, Rama Flash, and I'm Muse Web Design and Barry Belasco. So thanks everybody, really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up. I'm gonna try to put the one with the uh, uh, Spark tutorial on the right. The left one usually just does whatever they do. And uh, that is it, so check out those other videos. I appreciate it and uh, I will see you on the next one.